Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of March 20th, 2023. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page, and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we discuss the critical facts that the Alaska media's articles on the PFD continue to leave out. Second, we explain the growing disconnect in how the legislature is approaching Alaska's fiscal situation this session. And third, we examine legislative hypocrisy on display. We, the legislature, need big raises but middle and lower income Alaska families, you should accept big PFD cuts. And now let's join Michael. All right, so this week uh, we got some big things going on. The first thing is there's lots of discussions about uh, PFD ideas, how to fix the PFD. Uh, but there are things missing in the debate, uh, says you. Um, and uh, of course you're referencing the article that was in the uh, you're referencing the article that was in the Alaska Beacon about all these different ideas uh, that are going on there. So let's start there. What what are some of the ideas that are missing, and uh, you know what what's not being covered in this conversation? Well, there was a there was an extensive article in the Beacon yesterday. Uh, James Brooks did a did an analysis of the PFD, in, in, and in some respects, it's a great article. In some respects, it really you know covers the waterfront in terms of the number of various alternatives that people have put out there all the way from the statutory PFD, which was the basis of Governor Dunleavy's proposal uh, uh, in this budget, uh, all the way down to the $1,000 PFD that's uh, in Zach Field's uh, bill that's before before Ways and Means. And he does a, he does a good job of covering the, po the politics, uh, sort of the infighting, the, the, the uh, in-the-room politics about how those various uh, proposals are being considered. But there's one th one huge thing uh, that is missing from the article. It misses, it's missing from most of the media coverage of the PFD. Uh, and frankly, uh, it, it's missing from a lot of the legislative consideration of the PFD, at least the, the in front of the camera hearing hearings that are that are going on about the PFD. And that is what is the impact of the PFD and PFD cuts? on Alaskans. Um, and that's something that, that we just doesn't seem to, to enter into the debate, certainly doesn't enter into, into uh, uh, James's article. When you and I talk about uh, issues on here, on, on, on this, on the show, you very uh, uh, straightforwardly ask, okay, so what does that mean for Alaskans? What does that mean for Alaska? What does it mean for, uh, for the people listening to the show? There's nothing about that in uh, in James's article. There's nothing about what the impact is uh, on Alaskans of the of the various uh, PFD proposals. I mean, in terms of the dollars that would flow to Alaskans from the PFD, I guess I guess he has that covered. But in terms of what the impact is of using PFD cuts relative to alternatives to balance the budget, there's nothing in there. And and there's three big things. There's three big issues. That, that flow from using PFD cuts relative to alternatives. One is the impact on the economy. You and I have talked uh, for a long time about the ICER study, that in, in the 2016 ICER study that, that conclusively found PFD cuts of all the alternatives, income taxes, sales taxes, property taxes, a number of other revenue alternatives, of all of those alternatives, PFD cuts 
have the largest adverse impact on the economy uh, of any of the alternatives. You don't find anything about that in James's James's article. You don't find anything about that uh, in, to to a large degree in the uh, in the in the hearings, the legislative hearings on the PFD. The second is the impact on jobs. The same uh, uh, study that James did in. Uh, uh, or the same uh, ICER study that was done in, in 2016 found that of all the alternatives, PFD cuts have the largest adverse impact on jobs. They take more jobs out of the economy because of the re reduced uh, spending by middle and lower income Alaska families. They take more jobs out of the economy than any of the other alternatives, more than income taxes, more than sales taxes, and more than property taxes, more than any other alternative. You don't find any of that discussed. Uh, in James's article, mentioned in James's article, or mentioned uh, much in the legislative hearings. And the third is the one that we talk about a lot on the show, which is the impact on Alaska families. That that PFD cuts have the are are regressive, have a huge adverse impact on middle and lower income Alaska families. Take more from them, 80% of Alaska families, than any of the other alternatives. You don't find any of that in James's article. Uh, uh, no analysis of what the impact is on Alaska families relative to alternatives. And you, and you often don't hear that in legislative hearings either. So what, what Alaskans are getting from their media is, is great inside baseball about what's going on at the legislature and great inside baseball about what all of the various options are, but virtually no discussion of what the impact on them, on Alaska families, the readers, the impact on them, uh, of uh, of the various alternatives and, and what and what we're losing as as Alaska families as uh, in terms of Alaska jobs in terms of Alaska income in terms of the impact on the economy what we're losing from uh, from those uh, from from you know using PFD cuts as, as opposed to the alternative you know yesterday you, you mentioned it in the opening segment yesterday House Finance uh, uh, Delana Johnson dropped uh, uh that dropped uh the position that the house finance committee her position her recommendation to the house in the committee substitute in the house uh committee subs house finance committee substitute that they're going to use a 50 50 uh, pomv uh, pfd that they're going to cut governor dunleavy's proposed statutory pfd down to uh a pomv 50 50 and that's a cut of about 600 million dollars um in the pfd just like that. I mean, that was that was that was sort of the the extent of the discussion. But no, no analysis uh, before the committee. No analysis. No discussion about what the impact of that has using that mechanism uh, to raise the funds to raise funds to cover the budget. No, no analysis of that uh, of that uh, decision on, uh, on jobs, on the overall economy, or on Alaska families. It's just. It's sort of like they don't matter. I mean, it's sort of like, right. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and again, on the, on the opposite side, you one thing that they that the news media does continue to cover, and they do continue to cover in the legislative debates and in the forums and on video and everything else, is, of course, the impact to the government if they don't do these things. Oh, the impact to the government will be, oh, the impact to this program, oh, the impact to these kind of things and these constituencies and these jobs and these all these it's all again it, we've talked about it but it's all about the public how can we protect the public government economy over the private economy and with almost no discussion on the impact on the private economy it's all about yeah. the doom and gloom of the state not being able to provide all these you know wahoo services that they want to provide all across the spectrum not the constitutionally mandated services but all the services all the pie in the sky thing so any kind of discussion always goes back to oh what's the impact on the government if we don't take this money from the people what's the impact on them that's the thing we're now in the service of government instead of the service of the public or the private economy here in the state yep exactly right but but even if you assume even if you assume that government somehow needs the money even if you you know make the leap that that government needs the money then the secondary analysis of what's the best way to do it, what's the best way to raise that money for government, what's the impact of the various alternatives and how to raise that money uh, for government. No analysis of that. It's just, I mean, it's just straight to the, straight to the, well, the PFD is coming through our fingers, coming through, you know, the legislature's fingers on its way to the people. And we'll just, we're going to slice off whatever we want 
uh, uh, that we that we think we need in order to in order to fund government. So it's it's um, it's disappointing in the sense that in the failure the failure to include that discussion in the media, the failure to include that discussion of the various alternatives and the impact of using PFD cuts over the various alternatives, the failure to include that in legislative hearings is, I think, you know, legislators get away with making these cuts um, uh, to the PFD, using PFD cuts, because Alaskans don't understand that there, A, are alternatives, and B, that the alternatives have a lower impact, a lower adverse impact uh, on Alaska families, on on the Alaska economy, and on Alaska jobs uh, of, that have lower impacts than uh, than PFD cuts. So it's, I, I think I, they're shortcutting the debate, uh, frankly, because I don't think they want Alaskans to understand what the alternatives are. They're shortcutting the debate, um, and and in the and and the media is just doing the same thing as shortcutting the debate uh, and leaving uh, leaving that analysis out of it. It's it's uh, it's, it's just disappointing because we're not we're not considering the best interests of the overall Alaska economy, the best interests of Alaska jobs, and the best interests of Alaska families when we're making these decisions. Brad Keithley is our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Before we move off of number one, there are a handful of different options out there. Are any of the options out there palatable to you, uh, whether it's the House Ways and Means Committee's bill, which would basically reinstitute the shall transfer thing in the Constitution, whether it's uh, you know HJR 7, HJR 8, any of these out there look to you like they are a possible solution for what's going on with the PFD discussion? Well, I think HJR 8, if I recall, if I have my numbers right, or 7, I, actually I'm losing track of the numbers. The one that says uh, we will constitutionalize the PFD at, uh, at, at, at statutory levels or at POMB 50-50, uh, as part of a broader resolution of all of these of all of the fiscal issues that we will const, const, constitutionalize the PFD and constitutionalize the the, the permanent fund, uh, the draws from the permanent fund. I think that in the context of an overall solution, as the fiscal policy working group uh, worked through it, I think that is a, a that would be a very good solution because that's going to force you then to address the other revenue options that you have, the lower impact revenue options that you have out there and, and weigh those against, uh, against the budget. So I, I think that constitutionalizing uh, the PFD, constitutionalizing the, the, the draw the legislature makes from the permanent fund uh, would, be a, uh, would be a very, uh, as a piece, as a part of an overall solution, uh, would be a very good, uh, a very good step. Um, Linda asks in the uh, chat room, um, Brad, have you ever made a presentation for both finance committees? Um, and I know that you've testified in part in the past. Uh, have you sat before the finance committees and asked these questions or um, can we get somebody to invite you on to ask these questions? I mean, I think these are important. I mean, you know. I, I've been before the finance committees, both finance committees back in the middle 20 teens. But since we let's see, since we've had PFD cuts. Yeah. I don't think I've, I think, I don't think I've been before the finance committee since we've had PFD cuts. I testified before ways and means last session. Um, and it was, it was sort of like, Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. And my, my comment was we need to, con as you consider bills, we need to consider the impact on Alaska families and on the economy and jobs. They said, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. And then they never did it. So right. um, the answer is, the answer to the question is yes, but not for a long time and and, and not since we've started into PFD cuts. Um, uh, Kevin McCabe made a comment earlier when we were talking about the HJR resolutions. He said that HJR 7 and 8 kind of go in combination together. And I think they actually even work with the fiscal policy working group or with the uh, House Ways and Means bill that comes out as well that that constitutionalizes the transfer as a shell transfer, giving the legislature basically no option on it. It is a shell transfer. So I think all three of them are kind of working in combination, um, which is all, again, part of the overall fiscal policy working group plan. Remember, everything had to be done holistically, right? I mean, that was the whole point. It is. And, 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 and any, any, any combination that comes out with, uh, Yes, we're going to raise revenue 
another way, a, a lower impact way, a way that that engages the top 20 percent in pushing back on spending. Yes, we're going to constitutionalize the PFD and yes, we're going to constitutionalize the draw from the PF, from uh, the permit fund. Any of those solutions, I think, uh, in combination uh, are, are an attractive package. All right. So that's number one. Uh, we're going to move on to number two, which uh, Brad is going to talk about uh, the growing fiscal disconnect this session in regard specifically to talking about school funding and everything else, while at the same time, we're, we got some issues on the revenue side. Uh, go ahead and give me a tease. We'll leave a little early and come back. Well, uh, there's there's been several uh, uh, moves out there. Senate education uh, voted out a bill that would increase uh, uh, K through 12 funding, increase the BSA substantially, and then tie it going forward to uh, uh, to inflation, which would have substantial fiscal implications. Um, the, the the House is moving forward on its budget, but but FY 24 revenue. Uh, is looking very, very shaky. I mean, oil prices are down fourteen dollars, twelve, twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars uh, from uh, from what was in the uh, the fall revenue forecast for FY twenty four. That has huge implications on uh, on the revenue side, but no one's paying attention to that yet. The spring revenue forecast still hasn't come out. Uh, the, the the discussion of revenues really hasn't started, and so we have all of these spending bills moving forward and people getting locked into positions on these spending bills without really considering where the revenues are going. And, and the result is a, is a half, halfway discussion that that's not doing the state uh, any good service. Oh, I was shaking my head. Now, Brad, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The spring budget forecast was, uh, was supposed to be out on the 15th. Here we are the 21st, six days later, uh, and no spring forecast. Uh, what's going on? Well, I, the answer is I don't know. I my, I understand. I was told yesterday that it's supposed to come out today. Uh, the last few years has come out on uh, on on March fifteenth uh, during the Walker administration. I was looking back uh, this morning during the Walker administration. It came out sometimes in April. So there's no. I guess there's no fixed date. Uh, that it's uh, that it's that it's usually to come that it comes out, but moves around a lot. But the last few years has come out on March fifteenth, so um, I, I, I'm not quite sure uh, uh, what they're doing. But 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 we're we we've ended up we're ending up with the cart before the horse. We're ending up with a bunch of spending bills uh, uh, moving ahead uh, and getting people entrenched in positions on spending bills. Um, you know, we've got people who are you know. BSA, no matter what, and 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 the and the the consequence of that is we have all these spending bills going forward, people locking in on positions, and revenues not being part of the discussion when revenues very much need to be part of the discussion. Hope, hopefully, we will catch up with that process uh, during the during the next couple of weeks. But it's really, I mean, we've had the cart moving way ahead out in front of the horse here. Uh, you, we talked about the uh, spring revenue forecast last week, but your predictions at this point is that it's going to be eye-opening. <laughs> I mean, that we're going to be looking at more deficits than we originally anticipated uh, compared to the fall forecast based on everything that's going on in the world. Well, looking at FY24, we're looking at something like 700 to $800 million less in, in, in traditional revenues than it was projected in the, uh, in the fall forecast. And, and, and looking across the ten-year span, or even the five-year span, we're looking at revenues that are down significantly uh, from what was in the traditional revenues that were down significantly from what was in the fall forecast. So, we're, we're looking we're looking at a at a at a situation that's materially different, I think, in terms of revenues than than what was in the fall forecast and what some have been using uh, for as the basis for discussion so far. Maybe, you know, maybe that's that's all part of a plan to get people locked in on all these spending positions before they, before they talk about, uh, before they talk about revenues. I mean, part of the justification yesterday that, that uh, uh, Delana Johnson gave for cutting the PFD down to POMV 50, 50 from the governor's proposal was that, Hey, we got big deficits. We got to do something. There's only so many levers we can pull. So we're going to pull on, uh, pull PFD cuts again. We're going to pull the, the worst, the one that's in the room. 
again, going back to the ICER language of all the levers you can pull. We had the ICER folks by, on the program back in 2016, and that's exactly what they said. They said, here's a wall of levers, and you've got all the levers you could pull. And the one that has the most adverse impact on the economy is pulling the levers for PFD. It's ironic that she's using the same imagery for that same kind of thing. <laughs> but that there you go. All right, we're back now. Alaska's for Sustainable Budgets. Brad Keithley here is our guest. Uh, we're continuing with the weekly top three. We're on to number two, which is the growing fiscal disconnect uh, that's happening this session. We've talked about that disconnect in a lot of different ways, including the complete disconnect from the public and private sector that uh, represent or that uh, Senator Rob Myers has talked about and more. Uh, Brad is going to give us the rundown on this specifically with the school spending and, and of course, the spring revenue forecast, which apparently is due out today. Uh, Brad, go ahead. Well, Michael, the, 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 point, the point of this is that we have a bunch of spending bills moving forward. We have how, our Senate education moving forward with the K through 12 bill that substantially increases the BSA uh, by nearly $300 million. Uh, ties it to inflation thereafter, which would uh, increase it even more over time, continuing to, to ramp up uh, that spending. We have the House Finance uh, Committee yesterday having that, the, the budget substitute, considering the budget substitute. Uh, that uh, 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 incorporates the governor's uh, spending proposals, which frankly sort of ramp up spending a little bit more. We have Senate, we have the Senate uh, Finance talking about uh, defined benefits, which, uh, you, you know, as much as some people say it's not going to raise costs, it, it is going to raise costs. I mean, that's the whole purpose of it, to transfer the risk, to transfer the, the burden of, of, of having enough money for retirement over to the state, taking it away, uh, move, removing it from, uh, from individuals. So that's going, to, uh, that's going to increase costs. We have all of these, all of these efforts to increase costs, but we don't have, we don't have revenues in front of the um, in front of the legislature. So it's like a family sitting down to the table saying, boy, I'd like to take this vacation. I'd like to buy that new car. I need a new boat. We need a new uh, snow machine. We need, a, we need several, we need house repairs. We need to do all these things. Uh, but without any consideration of, of what the revenue that's coming in to, uh, to support it. So it, it, we, need, we need to have revenue on the table at the same time as we have a discussion about all these spending plans or else we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing ourselves into a deeper and deeper hole. And, and when you look at where revenues are going, when you look at oil prices um, uh, and, and yesterday during the house finance committee discussion, uh, Delaney Johnson suggested that uh, permanent fund earnings are going down well as well. So when you look at, when you look at all these, all these revenue sources, they're going down. So we've got spend, a push for spending to go up, or, or at least in, 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 in the case of the governor's budget to remain flat. We've got spending going like this, and we got revenues going like this, and no one's sitting there thus far. No one's sitting there going, hmm, these don't match. <laughs> and, and, and we're moving ourselves into, into a deeper fiscal hole uh, by going this direction. I, it, it's, 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 it's a way that we've run this government before. Uh, it's a way that we sort of ran it through the 20 teens and we saw what happened. I mean, we just drained savings and savings and savings. And then when we ran out of that, now we're draining the permanent fund, permanent fund dividends down and down and down. We shouldn't be doing that. We should have, we should have revenues uh, on the table at the same time we're talking about spending and have a reality check uh, on uh, on some of these spending proposals that just aren't there. If I think I think when the revenue forecast hits, people are going to understand ah K through twelve. I, we may not we can't afford that. We can't afford the increases they're talking about. Set set aside the whole discussion about you know in, inflation impact and all that sort of stuff. We can't afford it. We don't have the money to do it without taxing Alaskans. And then having a discussion about the best way to tax Alaskans to pay for it, if that's if that's the direction we want to go. But moving forward on these spending bills without having revenues on the revised revenue forecast on the table, I think it's just a recipe for disaster. Certainly, a recipe for getting uh, getting to the end. Uh, and Bert Stedman or somebody saying, "Well, just got to cut the PFD some more because we just got to tax Alaska families 
uh, some more because, you know, we need the money and boy, you know, this money's coming through our fingers. So we got to do it. I, like it's you. just, I, we're, we're not mat We're not running. We're not matching the two sides of the, of the income statement uh, uh, at the same time. Like you said, it's ironic that they're uh, giving them time to get, but get all these uh, uh, spending bills out there to get entrenched in their arguments as to why it needs to happen. And then we'll get the surprise, the October surprise of the, uh, spring revenue forecast to realize the money is just not there to fix those things. And that's going to be part of the problem. Uh, this is going to be the, re- this is going to be the battle for the rest of the session. I believe it is. I mean, last year, last year, the October surprise on the revenue side was, was good news, right? It was revenues are up. Oil prices are up. Revenues are up. The market's been doing well. Uh, permanent fund earnings are going to be, uh, are going to be uh, relatively strong. Everything's good news. And, and that changed the dynamic. Everybody said, well, geez, you know, we got all this money. Let's spend some more and some more and some more. This year, the October surprise is going to be revenues are down uh, hard uh, for FY24. And revenues are going to be down hard over the next uh, 10 year period. And and that should that should create the opposite dynamic than what we had last year. I mean, it, it, in, a, in a rational world, it should create the optional, uh, the alternative dynamic. But we, we're not we're not having that dynamic because we haven't been honest with ourselves about where revenues are going. Uh, and so all these spending bills are just, you know, they continue building and building and building all these efforts behind increased spending, just to just continue building and building. And it's going to, you know, we're going to have a come to Jesus moment out there, but we're already going to have, we're already going to have people already committed to all of this spending before they realize that uh, we don't have the revenues to pay for it. A uh, quick recap of last week when we were talking about what you expect the projections to be. We talked about this a bit in the break, but you're expecting that the spring revenue forecast is going to show some, well, pretty grim numbers. Yeah, we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be down for FY24. We're going to be down uh, roughly eight hundred million dollars, seven to eight hundred million dollars from uh, from where we were. Uh, uh, in the fall revenue forecast for FY24, and and about the same thing uh, occurs uh, occurs uh, through the remainder of the of the ten year period. Tr- traditional revenues, oil revenues, are going down over that ten year period. They take a huge dive in FY24, and then they sort of continue going down over that period. Permanent fund earnings sort of fill it fill in some of that and sort of keep revenues total UGF revenues, unrestricted general fund revenues, flat over that period. But we've got spending. I mean, you, you layer on the, the next step of this, you got spending in terms of the BSA increase, in terms of defined benefits, in terms of university. All of that spending is, just sort of takes off like that. So it's um, we, we, we just don't have a good match between the two. Uh, all right. That's number two. Again, the disconnect, the fiscal disconnect. And we've talked about many different aspects of that, including the discussion, as I said earlier, with Senator Rob Myers, who uh, who said that that is one of the most dangerous things, disconnecting the public and the private economy from each other. Uh, he also just said our fiscal situation is not a rational setup, which I would also agree with. We're putting the cart before the horse all the time in what we do around here. Um, it's a rational setup if you're if, uh, and and Rob's the perfect one to make this point. It's a rational setup if your goal is to increase government spending <laughs> because because you get all of the government right. spending bills out there uh, and all the and all the push and all the comments for government spending uh, out there before you you know before you actually know what revenues you have to deal with. So if you're right. if you're if your goal is to increase government spending, it's rational from that standpoint. Any other any other perspective, it's not rational. Again, just another argument for the fourth of the four charter of changes is changing the way that we budget. I mean, we need to do something differently instead of putting this cart before the horse again and again and again. Uh, number three, <clears throat> Brad says that there could be a little hypocrisy in the Alaska legislature. I mean, <laughs> I find that shocking, Brad, shocking that there should be some hypocrisy in the Alaska legislature when it comes to spending, especially when it comes to legislative and government pay. Go ahead. Well, this this whole this whole uh, uh, mess that we've gotten ourselves into on legislative and, and executive pay is just a it, 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 we've got legislators who are saying, yes, I know we have to be responsible fiscally. Yes, I know we have to 
we have to, you know, restrain our, we, we have to restrain government spending. Yes, I know that, you know, we, we, we don't have, we don't have the fiscal power to, or the revenue power to, to do all these things. And then we get, we get this, the legislative, we get this pay package that um, is, has, has gone off the rails. I mean, the pay package came over from the compensation uh, commission and it was only for executives. It was a fairly high pay package for uh, for uh, uh, the governor, for lieutenant governor, and the and the heads of the various uh, 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 agencies. Um, high pay package. Legislature rejects that. Then, then the commission, the governor essentially fires the commission. On they a reset Tuesday the afternoon. Commission. The commission in a fifteen minute meeting. Uh, resets the pay package not only to increase salaries for the governor, but now to also increase it for uh, for legislators. Um, and and so we're we, we've now got we're now going. You know, you, you know, we talked about we talked about the fiscal the budget being out of sync with with pushing spending above rev above revenues. Now we've got you know the legislators doing the, doing the same thing. Legislators will will tell you, "Oh, I didn't. I'm. I haven't voted for that. I voted against the pay package. You know, don't tag me with that responsibility." But the way it's set up, it's going to go through unless legislators will vote against it. And when you look at the media when they talk to legislators, legislators are saying, "Well, it's a complicated issue. I don't know if I'll vote for or against it." And uh, and and are really putting themselves in a position to let the to let the salaries go up. So at the same time. As we have revenues going down, we have and we have PFDs going down, PFD cuts being implemented, taking money out of the hands of of, of Alaska families, uh, taking money out of the Alaska economy, uh, taking jobs out of the Alaska economy. At the same time, we have all of that going on. We have legislators saying, "Yeah," and 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 the governor and, and, and administrative head saying, "Yeah," but but we need pay increases. So you know. Give us the pay increase. It's it's going to be. I mean, they're putting themselves in a position. How do you push back on K through twelve spending increases for K through twelve? And you just gave yourself a big a big pay increase. How do you how do you push back on defined benefits when you just gave yourself a big a big pay increase? It's it's just the height right. of hypocrisy. You, if you're going to push back on one, you need to push back on the other. I was just shocked the fact that the governor fired everybody on Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning. They had the new meeting and it was all settled by Wednesday midday. Like it was all said and done. I mean, the fix was in, obviously, uh, in that kind of situation. I mean, Gary Stevens basically said it on the, in the paper. Uh, if we don't get pay for legislators, nobody's getting a pay raise, essentially is what he said in the newspaper. To me, Brad, that was the most shocking thing. Is that Gary Stevens basically said in the ADN, well, you know, we're just not going to vote for anything because they haven't discussed legislative pay raises. The, the Like the two days later, a couple board members resign. And then uh, the next day, the governor fires everybody that remains and they get a whole new batch in there. And then they're like, well, here you go. Here's legislative pay raises. Thirty four thousand dollars per legislator uh, on top of what they're currently getting. Plus, the per diem remains the same, so they can get up to another whatever it is, thirty-five, thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of per diem. Um, I look, I'm not, I'm not shorting anybody a, a, an honest living, but you're working essentially part time for hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. For uh, ne- the legislative session is hell. I, I, you know, four months of hard, hard work, no doubt about it. But the remainder of the eight months, you're working part time. You're making hundred and thirty thousand bucks a year. That's a uh, pretty good pay. When it's all said and done, Michael, they just they just moved themselves into the top twenty percent on legislative pay alone. I mean, you're 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 exactly right that it, that it's supposed to be a part jo- part time job. They're supposed to be citizens legislators, but they just moved themselves into the top twenty percent. Think about this: all of them, every last one of them, into the top twenty percent on legislative pay alone. And you know, you talk about not being connected. To Alaskans, I, it, they they they're they're increasingly isolating themselves not only physically because they're down in Juneau, but isolating themselves economically by just you know they're comfortable. PFD doesn't mean that much to them, so why should it care much to anybody else? We'll just we'll just cut the PFD in part to pay us, in part to pay pay our increased salaries, in part to pay the governor's increased salary. Uh, we'll just take, we'll just keep taking more and more pocket money out of the pocket of, uh, of the other, other 80% of Alaska 
of Alaska families. It's it it. it I mean, it, it's just it, it it is it is indicative uh, of the total disconnect that we've gotten ourselves into into fiscally. We we don't we're we're not we're not saying oh let's worry about revenues then what can we spend inside revenues what's our what's our income and then and then what what can we afford inside that it's just let's spend 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 um, and we know we always can cut the PFD to pay for it we all, we can always take it out of the pockets of of middle and lower income Alaska families uh, uh, to pay for it it's just I it's you know disgusting hypocritical. Uh, disconnected, whatever whatever word somebody wants to apply to it, but it's not it's not doing Alaska any good. Brad, uh, what should we be watching for uh, this week? You think as we continue to see things going through, and we're watching it. Of course, the forecast is going to come out today. What uh, what should we be paying attention to in the in the short term here? I think in the short term, it's House Finance Committee, and it's the House Finance Committee amendments. Uh, to the budget. As they move through the budget, they take the CS that they've got, the committee substitutes that they've got from their leadership. And as they move through the budget um, and start to uh, start to finalize the at least the House finance version of the budget, it's it's what issues uh, are they talking about? Are they talking about issues that connect them to the Alaska that that connect the budget to the Alaska economy, to jobs and to Alaska families, or are they just, you know, are they part of the problem in terms of, in terms of being, uh, in terms of being disconnected? House Finance, for example, could say, no, we're not going to take that raise. We're going to take the money for the for the pay raise out of the budget. Um, it's just another statute. <laughs> I mean, right, good right. At working statutes. Yeah, but no. but we'll see what we'll see what they're going to do as the budget moves through. Uh, Gary lays some truth on us here, and I got to agree with Gary. But at the same time, it's on us to fix this. If this does not get out to a larger and a diverse audience, other than those of us here, again, preaching to the choir, it, it's it's going to be the only way to get people thinking. We have to get it out there. AK4SB needs to expand away from like-minded venues. Well, we'd love that. Brad, could you get some invites to people who don't agree with us and get get in front of them? I mean, this is really, Gary, on you and every other listener out there to share these conversations with your legislators, to share them with your friends and family. I always, I mean, when I say like and share the show, it's not just for my own self-gratification. I mean, it is for that. Sure, I love that. But the problem is more people need to be involved in these conversations at this level. Right, Brad? I mean, we're just not, most people, it's superficial. It's headline. They're reading the headlines. They're reading the first paragraph. They're moving on. They just got all the info they needed. And as we talked about, the news media is not our friend in this case. No, the news media, news media is just parroting what some, what some legislators say, legislative leadership. And legislative leadership is just saying, you know, we need more money. We, 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 we've got all these spending problems. We need to spend more money on them. And, uh, and, and we'll just, you know, we'll grab it out of the PFD as it, as it, as it goes by. Um, I, here, here's what I think motive. If more legislators talked about these issues, I think the media would pick it up. Um, if more legislators who were in leadership talked about these issues, I think the media would pick it up. If there were more legislative hearings on these issues, I think the media would pick it up. I still have a lot of, a lot of uh, hope uh, for the work that uh, the Ways and Means Committee is doing in the House and the hearings that they're having. Uh, and hopefully some of these issues will be surfaced in the course of, in the course of those hearings. Um, you know, it's 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 slow work to put together a comprehensive plan, and I know Ben's laying a foundation uh, to support a, a, a plan. But that's one place where some of these some of these issues and some of this discussion can take place. Uh, but it, it 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 takes legislators and and government officials talking about it to trigger the news media to start to start reporting on it uh, uh, in uh, in their stories as well. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets, AK4SB.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, pretty much everywhere. Brad, uh, we'll see if we can get this out to a wider audience. That's what we're working on right now. We'll see. Everybody should share this right now. That's what we should do. It. Thank you, Brad, for coming on board. We appreciate it. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. 
This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.